Hi guys, just wanted to do a double check before we really move on. Are you guys able to hear me out properly? All right, thank you, Pooja. Thanks for that. So, guys, uh, before we really jump on and move further, first thing first is that I would want all your all your videos to be on, please. It has to be a video chat. It has to be a face to face live chat with you. It should not be in you know a video that has been sent to you and you're seeing it as per your own convenience. So uh, can I request all of you to please switch on your uh, videos, please? Um, I have to uh, have this as a video chat with all of you in terms of taking you through as to what we really want to cover and what we really intend to cover from the standpoint of strategic business leader exam today. Having said that, let's move on. What we have in store today is, is something that we really intended to cover from the strategic business leader exam standpoint is the strategic business leader exam orientation which effectively would lay on the foundation that you really need to have in order to do well in this exam. Now, before we really jump in, I have a presentation to be, to be displayed over here. So let me just come up with my screen. Can you guys see this, please? Can you guys see my screen and uh, a heads up on that or some, some message on that would be helpful in terms of you being able to see my screen and all right. So moving on in terms of you know what we intend to cover today from the orientation standpoint i have few slides to be covered over here just to give you a perspective as to what you should be knowing from the sbl exam standpoint some ground rules that i have and i am uh, you know i'm sure you you would would really need that to have with you before we really jump on and move further first thing first should be that you know all your mobile phones should be should be on the silent if not on the switch off, switch off mode more from the standpoint that I really want your 40, 45 minutes, the coming 40, 45 minutes to be with me in terms of, you know, what we really intend to cover from the syllabus area standpoint. As I said, all the cameras to be on, I'm not too sure if, you know, why people are ignoring me for that, but all the cameras to be on. And let me tell you one thing, very, very upfront that many of the live sessions that you would have with me as we may go forward, you would have to have your camera on. I would not appreciate cameras to be switched off, please. Because if that is the case, then you should have my videos, not my live sessions. If it would be a live session, you guys have to come on the videos and it has to be a video based live sessions. So this is the first session. So I'm, I'm just ignoring that for now. But as we go forward, it would be and it should be a face to face meeting the way we would be having as we go forward. All right. Then we have, uh, you know, um, a request to all of you that we should be open opening up to to each other and talking as much as possible, especially to the folks who are repeating strategic business data for whatsoever reason. I really want to hear out in terms of, you know, what is struggling you and, and what is really troubling you from the, from the standpoint of uh, you not being able to make the mark of 50 over there. I really want to understand in terms of, you know, where things are going wrong as per you. And then, you know, of course, I would add on whatsoever I know from this exam standpoint and my experiences in relation to this, this exam. I would add on to that and then we'll build on it. So as much as possible, let's let's open up, let's see and discuss in terms of you know where the problems have been, and then let's try to find the you know, solution together for that. All right. Last but not the least is of course making the best out of the session. And of course, all of the sessions that we would have as we go forward. Your time is really precious, and I really value that. All you need to do is that you have to value your time and give your best in these sessions having an open discussion, getting a close and the well-rounded feedback would be super important for you to really do well in this exam. And that is what you really need to target on. Hmm. Seems you're liking the video. If yes, then why don't you subscribe to our channel Fintram Global to keep getting all these videos and the updates. Do press the like button, my friend. It really motivates us and share it with all your friends. All right. Moving on, guys, we have an agenda over here that we intend to cover, starting from, you know, some of the questions that you may have. So I have a list of questions that I feel you may have. So I've created that for you so that, you know, at least I, I can take some basic uh, repetitive questions that I see and hear out from various students. So we'll cover that. We'll talk on the exam structure and the content, the ASBIL exam structure and the content. We'll talk on that. We'll also talk on the strategic business leader exam marking scheme. That is something you really need to know because this has a peculiar style of being, being tested in the exam. So we'll, we'll deep dive on that. And then we will talk on the syllabus areas. 
the the overall syllabus area of the strategic business leader exam is vast and we should at least have the feeler after these 45 minutes that what the overall curriculum of the strategic business leader looks like so we'll talk on that in terms of you know what the content is and of course then we'll talk on what the study plan or the approach to the preparation should be now this is something we have captured in detail in our sessions and of course the revision boot camp that you would see we have captured all of this in terms of you know what you should be doing when you should be doing and of course how you should be covering the the exam questions and of course so on and so forth the thing is that we will be overlaying the the basics today in terms of how you should be proceeding with the sessions and of course how one should be really targeting the questions as you may go forward so we'll talk on that and we also have the q and a today my friend then you know and that is where you know i really want you to be opening up in terms of you know the, the issues that you may have any help that you may need from me any support that you need from fintram at large happy to help happy to chat all right moving on guys some of the questions that we have we may have you know before we really jump in there just a test check of my sound and the video guys everything going fine guys can you guys hear me rightly see me rightly everything goes fine is going fine uh, i'm not going too fast too slow everything is fine all right rupal says yes good rupal thank you very much really appreciate the promptness in the responses it really helps me at least knowing that you guys are hearing me all right moving on guys we have some of the questions that you may have in your mind I, and i really want to discuss that i would be discussing each and every aspect of this as we, as we may go forward in in the in the coming few minutes i really want to have the answers of all these questions for you first thing first is how will i go forward with the lectures that we have given you and what should be the plan in terms of you know the plan of the study that you may have is the time enough how much time is needed and so on so forth many 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 times i get to see this question we'll talk on that is the material and the lectures that is given by fintram enough and do you need anything more anything less we'll talk on that too and then do we have the updated lectures available or there is any change that is coming up and so on so forth that is again something that we really need to talk on do we need to refer any the book okay i will will touch upon that do i need to practice any more questions okay if in doubt where to go all right you know this is something i have an answer up front if in doubt you have to have to have to reach out to me as soon as possible i will be sharing my details after this presentation and you should certainly note that out you should be reaching out to me as soon as possible and again i would get back to you as soon as possible as far as those queries are concerned all right is the mock exam important and if yes should i give when should i give my mock and of course how should i give my mock is another question that really comes up we have a specific mechanism in fintram wherein we are taking mocks for you for sure before you really sit for an exam and that is what we will follow for the strategic business leader exam too we have a mock that will come up of course a week before your exam and date of that would be communicated to you the timing of that timing of that would be communicated to you the mock is something that you surely should be giving surely should be giving and that mock would be checked by me in terms of what you have done how you have done and where you can improve on and so on and so forth you would get a detailed feedback of that mock and that is the reason one should certainly certainly not miss the mock i can tell you you know one thing which is which is very prevalent and 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 very a uh, common that i have seen in the students and especially from the from the students who are coming from uh, who are coming directly into the professional level and of course have have not not given the skill or the or the foundation level exam they really struggle at times because this is a cbe based exam and of course the way the examiner really asks questions in the exam way acc really expects the answers of the questions is somewhat different and that is what we need to learn that is that is what we really need to need to excel on and that is what we should be really looking forward to and that's where the giving of you giving the mock is the super important thing and we should really not be missing on that all right then will you get a revert on the review of your performance in the exam i think i already told you yes there is a detailed performance review that would be sent to you in terms of you know where you have done and where you have gone wrong and what you should be doing different if there is any and that is what you should really need to work on all right some of that i have already answered some of that which i have not i will be picking up as we may go forward in the session as we have some things to be shared in detail with you as we go forward in this presentation all right moving on guys we have 
our first slide that talks on the SBL exam structure. All right. Now, SBL is a four-hour exam, and I'm sure you know those of you who have done the basic research, you would have known that known, known this by now that it's a four-hour exam. 240 minute exam is something that you are not used to. Generally, we're used to three, three and a half hours. This is a specific exam that is a four hour exam. So be prepared, my friend. You have to have the habit of sitting, sitting for four hours in totality. For which you should be spending at least 45 minutes to one hour on the reading and preparing for the question. So do we need 45 minutes to 60 minutes for reading the question? Yes, sir. You certainly need 45 minutes to 60 minutes. And I can tell you many of the times you would find that even 60 minutes are not enough in terms of reading these questions because question over here is huge. And that's where you should be really be prepared in terms of you know, taking the things from the scratch and to the top in terms of you know what the examiner is expecting and saying in that kind of a question that you may get to see in this exam. We have practiced many questions, including the past exam questions in our in our revision boot camp, wherein you would do question with me in terms of you know how one should be reading it, how one should be assimilating it, how one should be preparing for writing, how you should be taking care of the formats, taking care of the professional skills and how one should be really going ahead and writing that. And an important piece in the strategic business secret exam is correlating the exhibits. And we'll come on to that because what you really get in over here is that you get a case as in you would get a case wherein you are a CFO, CEO, CTO, whosoever, and you are dealing with a particular scenario of an organization. Now on that scenario, he may give you different exhibits in terms of, you know, scenario as in, the situation number A, situation number B, C, D, and E. And on those exhibits or the scenarios, he would be asking you questions. And that's where you have to correlate the exhibits at times amongst each other in terms of finding out the right answer, what is being desired over there. And that is an art. You really have to learn that art because there is a plethora of information that is being given over here or given in the exam. And you really have to assimilate that in those 60 minutes understand that what relates to what and then start answering that in terms of satisfying the examiner what exactly he needs in the exam so that is what you really need to capture on and this is something we have captured in depth in our revision boot camp wherein we have solved various questions starting from concept to comprehensive to the exam standard questions and also the past examination questions giving you what you exactly need in order to kill this exam in the best possible way. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. Moving on, we have content. Now, what is the content of the, of the ISVIL exam? As I've already said, you would get one integrated case study kind of a thing, wherein one huge case would be given to you, which generally comes up in 10 to 15 pages. Remember this, my friend, it would be 10 to 15 page kind of a case study, wherein you would need to answer eight to 12 questions. And of course, can be less, can be more. All are mandatory. There is no choice in this strategic business leader exam. You have to answer each and every question over there. They may give you board minutes, spreadsheets, annual reports, surveys, proposals. They may give you press releases. They may give you some kind of workings. They may give you some kind of final, final risk register and so on and so forth. So they would give you a net number of things and you have to think through like the CFO, like a CFO, head of the function, audit manager, external consultant, a risk manager, a uh, an HR head and so on and so forth. So you have to wear different, different hats in terms of thinking through as to what may go wrong and what the examiner really expects over there and then answer it there and then. That's what the overall exam is all about. So there is only effectively one case study, which of course spans out in 10 to 15 pages, giving you different exhibits because you would have different situations over there. And all of those situations will have a specific questions being attached to it. And that is something you really need to take on. From the marking scheme standpoint, strategic business leader exam is a hundred marks exam, out of which 80 marks are for the technical skills in terms of what you would write. So he'll of course give you 
uh, 8, 10, 12, whatever questions that he'll give you in the exam, you have to answer that and you would get 80% of your overall marks. So 80 marks would be awarded in terms of what you would write for it. But 20 marks in this exam is for the professional skills that you would display in this exam. So in a way, I can say 80 marks is for what you would write and 20 marks is something how would you would write. So effectively, you don't have to write exam for 20 marks, but how you would write your exam for those 80 marks is something that would give you another 20 marks. If I may have to say it in a different way, the, in a way, you only have to write for 80 marks in the exam. 20 marks examiner will give you in terms of how you would display the professional skills, what we would read in this exam. And there are like professional skills that you really need to scan through. And that is something that is going to be the game changer in this exam. We have covered in depth these professional skills in our sessions. And of course, we have practically applied that to the questions in our revision boot camp. And sad, that is something you would relish once you would get in and start solving the question. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Moving on. Moving on, we have the exam marking scheme. We have, you know, we, we have already we known that 80 marks for what and 20 marks for how, but these 20 marks is for the professional skills, which are five professional skills. And this is something we have covered, as I said, in depth. We will be talking on the commercial communication. We'll be talking on the commercial acumen. We'll be talking on the analysis as the professional skills. We'll also talk on the skepticism. We'll also talk on the evaluation. These are the five professional skills. We can call it to be CKs. These are the five professional skills that we would really need to cover from the examination standpoint. We have to be knowing in terms of you know, what these professional skills are, and then we have to be understanding in terms of how one would be writing the exam, considering these professional skills into their mind. So you have to really apply these professional skills once you're writing the exam in terms of giving the examiner a perspective, yes, that this is what it would be. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. Moving on, my friend, we have the SBL syllabus area. So we have the A to I syllabus areas of your strategic business leader exam, which is huge. Now, two questions I get over here very often, and that's, that is something I really want to cover on. That is how and what have been covered in our sessions. Is the sessions are like completely covering all the syllabus areas or do I really need to refer anything? Is everything complete, updated? So let me tell you one thing very upfront. All the sessions that you have are updated one. There is nothing that you really need to refer in terms of the sessions as, as far as the content is concerned. Is there any specific material that you need to refer in addition to what FinTram is providing you? Answer is absolutely nope. The material that has been provided to you is self-sufficient and has helped and has been helping students across the globe in terms of clearing this exam. And that is very much self-sufficient for you to clear this exam too. So there is no need to refer any material. Again, we will not stop you referring, but as far as need is concerned, there is no need to refer anything. Material and the content and the lectures are self-sufficient in terms of you really knowing in terms of what is being addressed in this exam. The only thing that you may get to see is that if there is any change that would come up, which is like a midterm kind of a change, for example, if there is any change that has come up, which is applicable for the next attempt or next to next attempt, we would be coming up with the addendum and of course, additional changes that you really need to refer on. And the same would be shared with you in terms of what you should be knowing from that change standpoint. But there are not many in the ACCA SBL exam, so you should not be worried on that. But if there is anything that will come up, we would be covering that at length. You know, we have covered the syllabus sessions. We have covered the entire revision bootcamp. We have specific, specific sessions that we have dedicated to the SBL examiner reports, SBL technical articles. Even you can see my podcasts that are available on the SBL in terms of, you know, how one should be addressing the exam. All those podcasts are also available and you can certainly go and check them out. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. Now we have the A to I syllabus series, and I really wanted to give you the glimpse in terms of what and how you should be thinking about this. The first syllabus area is the leadership. Now, from the leadership standpoint, you are going the I'm going to give the exam of strategic business leader. 
can you expect examiner not testing you on your leadership skills in terms of how one should be managing the leadership of an organization answer is absolutely not you cannot expect that because examiner would certainly certainly check you on that he really want to understand that do you understand the qualities of the good leader do you understand how one should be really thinking about the culture of an organization how one should be changing the culture of an organization you should be knowing the ethics the professional ethics the corporate ethics of an organization and of course industry at large you should be thinking about fraud bribery corruption and so on and so forth all these components are very 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 prominent in the industry and examiner really wants you to know and display those leadership skills when you are writing your exam in the in the rightful way important to know in the strategic business leader exam and again there's something i keep saying that like a broken record this is not an exam which can be cleared by rote learning it is not possible this is an exam wherein you have to apply the common sense because this is the i i and you would see my sessions and i keep saying that like a broken record this is the most common sensical exam across the world that i have seen they only and only want you to really know the professional way the common sensical way of answering the questions in the exam all the syllabus areas should be at the back of your mind the thing that would really play over there would be the basic common sense in terms of how one should be reacting in that kind of a scenario in the best possible way and that's what we have really gone into deep when we have covered the questions and we have discussed each and every session because when we are discussing the leadership we have covered in terms of you know how one should be thinking about and we have covered that with the help of various industry and practical practical life examples we have not gone into the theory only we have taken that to the industry perspective to the industry parallels and we have talk on in terms of you know how and what is happening in the industry and how one should be really reading that one how one should be really answering that is that clear yes sir all right moving on to governance now you have you know you have done the leadership you know in terms of the qualities of the leader and so on and so forth now is the time to really understand what the governance is all about because you being the strategic business leader has to hit the market and has to know the corporate governance aspect of an organization you have to know how one should be really having a governance model how one should be having the committees how one should be reporting over there what is the role that you as a leader has what is the role that the board may have the directors may have and so on and so forth again a step towards becoming a leader in organization is also to understand these basic nuances of governance and examiner loves to test you on that is that clear yes sir all right moving on to the third business area my friend that is strategy how can you be a strategic business leader without knowing the strategy aspect you have to know the strategy aspect in terms of you know what the strategy of an organization would be what kind of a strategy an organization has and what kind of strategy an organization may adopt in different kind of scenarios you would understand in terms of how one should be analyzing the the overall scenario of an organization you have to understand the analysis of the environment of an organization you have to understand what capability you have in terms of doing your capability analysis you have to understand making the right choices and then you have to come on and start making the right strategy for yourself and then implementing that is the essence and that's what you'd be doing that's what you should be doing and that's what we definitely definitely deep dive in when we will get into this strategy is one of the favorite examiner area and you would always always find a question on the strategy in this exam in fact you may have more than one question in this exam in the exam as far as strategy is concerned is that clear yes sir all right moving on we have the business area that deals with risk now you being the strategic business leader you also need to know the risk that organization is exposed to and how one should be handling that dealing with that and of course ensuring that those risk that an organization is exposed to are being being mitigated to the best extent possible and that's why you have to identify the risk you have to manage the risk try to assess them as much as possible and of course mitigate them to the 
to the reasonable extent possible. And that's what we'd be learning in terms of risk that various organizations are exposed to nowadays. Of course, with the help of various examples that are very prevalent and very common in the market in terms of you know, what we have seen and how organizations have fallen because of the risk issues that they have really seen and observed as they have went forward. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Then we are going to technology and data analytics. Again, that is again something very heavily tested in the exam. Examiner really likes to test you on that. Are you aware of the modern technological changes that are happening in the industry? Are you aware of you know how one should be applying those changes to the question that you may get to see in the exam? Because the exam would give you one industry question. Now you really need to know which technology impacts in terms of you know that that as an industry and how would that impact on you being the strategic business leader of that organization how you should be complementing technology in terms of driving what the organization is supposed to drive and that is going to be the essence that is going to be the key over here and that is something you really need to ensure we'll be talking on the it of course it at large we will be talking on the you know, system securities and control in terms of you know, the overall security systems. We'll be talking on the cyber risks over here. We will also talk on the data analytics such as big data, the cloud computing and so on and so forth. There is so many topics that we will be talking on, especially from the standpoint of how industry is really shaping up. My favorite area is certainly, certainly this because without technology, you cannot exist in an organization now and we all understand that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. Moving on, we'll touch on you. We'll, again, this is something very common, and I'm sure you know people are coming from the finance background. They would really know this. We'll be talking on the internal controls. We'll talk on the audit, compliances, and of course, management reporting. We have this syllabus area talking on the overall organizational audit and controls, and that is something we'll be covering on in the syllabus area. All right. Then we will move on and of course switch on the gears and get on to the financial planning and the decision making side of it. Again, this is pure, pure, pure finance side of uh, the, the syllabus area wherein we'll be talking on the ratio analysis, the forecasting techniques, the decision trees, the expected values, the ratios. We'll talk on the ways of uh, doing the marginal costing, standard costing, and so on and so forth. So there are some small, small areas that we will be covering in the syllabus area wherein we will not uh, we are not expected to make those calculations in this exam, but it, it is more like a refresher for you to really know in terms of you know, what really ha you have to do or you have to manage when you're doing any kind of analysis in the exam. And that is something we'll be covering at large. And that is something we have covered when we're doing the questions also in the marathon, in the revision bootcamp, just to give you a sense of that if this kind of a question really comes up in this exam, then how one should be handling that in the best possible way. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All righty. Then we have the innovation and the performance excellence. Again, the, you know, I would say the fever, fever, fever of the decade. This is something that is going to be existing as we may go forward for many, many and many of the years because you cannot, cannot have an organization survive without the performance excellence and the innovation, which is a very, very mandate kind of a thing now for any organization to exist. You would be learning the disruptions and we have done this with the help of various industry level examples. You would see classes, you know, sessions talking on Yahoo's, the Google's and, you know, and the Uber's of the world, the, the Swiggy's of the world. You would see various examples being taken up, case studies being taken up in terms of, you know, what really went on over there, how did they did, what they did and so on and so forth. We have taken various industry level examples in terms of giving you a parallel, giving you an understanding in terms of you know, how industry is really changing. We'll be talking on that, all, you know, all those disruptions. We are we'll be talking on the disruptions that have been successful and that have not been successful. We'll be talking on that too. We'll be talking on the change management in terms of how one should be thinking about a change and of course, how one should be managing that. Again, one of the favorite examiner area, he would be you know, testing you on operational excellence. We'll talk on that too. And again, the overall project management is something any strategic business leader needs to be needs to be aware of and that is something also that we'll be covering that in length over in the sessions is that clear yes sir. all right moving on to the professional skills now once we have done these syllabus areas we'll also touch upon the professional skills there are some specific sessions 
that have been done or dusted for the professional skills in terms of what you should be knowing about these professional skills and how one should be applying these professional skills in the exam. So we'll be talking on that in terms of knowing that as to what we would be knowing for or what we should be knowing for these professional skills. We'll be talking on that. And again, that is something you really need to have at the back of your mind because you have to apply these professional skills when you're answering the questions in this exam. So that is something you should be aware of. And we'll be touching on that in detail when we'll be talking on the professional skills. There are five professional skills, as I said, C case is something that you know, we can use as a mnemonic. We have the communication skills wherein you have to express yourself very clearly and convincingly. I'm just giving you the overall gist of it. From the commercial acumen standpoint, you should have be having the awareness in terms of, you know, of how the overall business looks like and how the external environment of an organization is and considering that how one should be taking the right commercial decision over there is something that you really need to have an understanding of. We'll be covering the analysis skill again, which is a professional skill that, uh, that is very heavily tested in the exam, wherein he wants you to have the investigative mindset. And of course, you should be making queries and inquiries as much as possible in terms of arriving at the right decision for yourself. Professional skepticism is the next one wherein you have to think about, you know, in terms of, you know, what may go wrong and not taking things on the face value, having the corroborative evidence as much as possible. We'll talk on that and we'll deep dive it with the help of various examples too. Coming on to the evaluation skills again, you, when you're evaluating any proposal, how one should be doing that, how one should be assessing the information, the pluses and the minuses, how one should be really demonstrating that to the examiner, to the CFOs, to the CEOs in terms of really giving a solution to the proposal or the final, final take on the proposal is something that we would learn in the evaluation skills. These are the five professional skills. And as, as I said, he won't, be, he won't be asking you to write anything for these professional skills, but how you would demonstrate these professional skills in the exam would give you 20 marks in the exam. And that can be the game changer for you to really clear this exam or not to clear this exam. And that is something we have covered at length in terms of you know, understanding these professional skills in our sessions and then applying that to the questions in our revision bootcamp so that you are knowing that how one should be applying this to the question that you may get to see in your exam. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right, moving on. The employability and the digital skills is something you know, which is the recent business area or the syllabus area that has been added. It is nothing but it is more like they want you to understand in terms of how you should be writing the exam in the computer-based environment. So you are getting aware of the Excel, the, the, the words, you know, the, you being there in terms of answering the question in the CB format is something that you really need to learn. You have to use the computer technology when you would hit the industry. So the ACC really wants you to be prepared of right now from the standpoint of really handling uh, the computer-based issues or techniques that you may have to demonstrate in your exam. The CB platform is something that you really need to go through. You really need to understand before you really sit for the exam. And we have given a specific training on the entire entire CB module in terms of telling you as to how one should be thinking about it, how one should be taking on the question, how you should be looking on the screen, the issues that you may get to see over there, the functionalities that you will get, get to see over there, how can you utilize those functionalities and how can you be best prepared in terms of utilizing those and answering this exam in the best possible way. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right, moving on to the study plan and the approach to prep. I would not move on unless and until I get some kind of understanding from you that you're able to hear me out rightly, loud and clear, and you're seeing me rightly, very clearly. Can I have some heads up, please, in terms of me knowing that are you able to hear me out and get to see me? All right, Pooja says yes, Rupal says yes. Thank you, Pooja Rupal. Really appreciate that. All right. The study plan and the approach that you may have from the preparation standpoint is the sessions we have already shared with you. You know the sessions in terms of the content overall now because we have already covered the syllabus areas in terms of you know, how the sessions would flow in. You have all the sessions being available to you. 
you have to move from the one, from session number one to the end. You should not pick and choose sessions uh, as you may go forward. You have to start from the first session and you have to go till the end. The sessions have been have been given in a very sequenced manner, which really uh, helps you understand and assimilate all that what you really need. So start from the scratch and go to the top. Start seeing the sessions and, and, and start practicing the portions that are being given in the class. So there are many questions that have solved in the class um, session. So you know, just start seeing that, start answering that. Read through the professional skills in entirety because you would get to see professional skills after the sessions and then understand the formats needed by the exam. So first thing first is that you should go through all these sessions. There are sessions that are being dedicated to all the syllabus areas. You have to go through that. After that, you will move on to professional skills, professional skill sessions. After that, you will move on to the format sessions. You would also see sessions on how to read, how to write this exam, and that is going to be the key over here. Then you should jump on and start off with the video question marathon, wherein you'll touch upon the concept questions, the comprehensive questions, the exam standard questions, and the past exam questions. And then we will be covering all that what we have already spoken. We'll be touching upon the syllabus areas. We'll be touching upon the professional skills, the format. We'll be you know, consuming each and every aspect that we've learned into the practice of the questions that would happen in the video question marathon because now we will implement all our learnings over there. Towards the end, you should certainly practice two, two exam questions yourself. I always say this. Please do not undermine the way ACC really expects you to, the, to answer the exam. And that is something you can always learn if you have practiced at least two, two exams yourself. Two exam questions is something that you should certainly practice. And then towards the end, give us the mock exam. And of course, get the performance review. Get the understanding where you're going wrong and try to correct that as much as possible. I would say prefer giving two mocks. It is always good. But if not, then at least one exam is mandatory for everyone. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. Now that you have done all of that, you have done the syllabus area, you have done the revision boot camp, you have gone through the professional skills, you have gone through the formats of the exam, as in the formats that are relevant in the exam, because there are various formats that examiner really wants you to answer in the exam. He may want you to give him a press release, or he may want you to give him a memo, or a report, or an email, and so on and so forth. So you need to know the format that are there that you know that examiner says for these specific specific areas, and that is something we have categorically covered in our revision bootcamp, wherein we have specifically told you that you know this is something that you really need to follow, and if you are aware of that, you going wrong in the exam is something very very very, I would say less in terms of the probability. All right, once you've done the syllabus sessions, once you've gone through the revision bootcamp, you've practiced the marathon questions. You are given the mock exam. You are ready to hit the exam in the best possible way, my friend. And of course, once the result will come, then the day would be mine. You would certainly have to come up and treat me with the cup of coffee. That is something that is being demonstrated over here in the form of slide that you have to come up and that would be my coffee time. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. All right. Some of the questions that I just started off with, I think I have been able to answer that. Let me just go through that. If I have not, then I'll pick it up. How will I go forward with the lectures? I think what should the plan? I've already covered. Material lectures enough. Material lectures updated. I've already covered. Do I need to refer any book? Answer is no. No need to refer anything. Only thing that you may need to do is practice as many past exam questions as possible in the business leader exam. In SBL exam, there is no need to refer any book. It is not required. Do I need to practice any more questions? Yes, you may have to practice more questions in addition to the marathon. You know, there are one or two more questions that are there in the past exams. Just take it up and sort, and, and, and sort that out. If in doubt where to go, I've already answered that. I'm just coming up to the screen wherein you would have my details. You can reach out to me. Is mock exam important? Absolutely, yes. You, you know, would you be getting kind of a review of your performance in the exam? Yes, you would be getting. So effectively, I've answered everything. Uh, and uh, that is what. All right. Now, this is a very important screen. This has... The details, you know, if in case you're thinking about, uh, you know, taking the sessions from Fintram, of course, you have the details. You can reach out to them uh, and, of course, reach out to the website and you can think through in terms of, you know, what you really want to look forward to. My name, you know, my name is, of course, demonstrated over here. 
Uh, my WhatsApp number is also here. And of course, my email is also being here, being given to you. You can note it down. And of course, if there is anything that I can help you out with in terms of resolving your query, your concern, in terms of you performing well in this exam. And of course, making sure that my cup of coffee is insured, I would be happy, happy to do that. Now, that's what I wanted to cover, my friend, in this session. You know, I think I have covered all that, what I had in store. I would be happy to, to answer any query anyone may have. So, you know, open to any kind, of a, any kind of queries, concerns, questions that anyone may have, and I can answer that. But before, no questions till now. All right, Rochita, good. If there is nothing, okay. Sir, how can we purchase the sessions? Uh, Pooja, in case uh, you, you want uh, sessions to be purchased, you can reach out to you know, fintram.com. And of course, uh, I am giving you the website also. It's, it's, it's fintram.com. You can reach out to that. And of course, uh, team would be there to help you out in terms of uh, uh, you know, getting your sessions and, and you can place your order there. Rupal says, I'm unable to converse on videos and audios and I'm, I'm at my workplace. Just wanted to know if there is any provision of just attempting the mock and getting it evaluated. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Rupal, we don't have that provision. Uh, we definitely uh, uh, want you to give the mock. And of course, uh, uh, we will get happy to provide you the performance review of it. But that comes along with the sessions. If you have not taken the sessions, not taken the revision bootcamp, you are anyway not, you know, you are not being, being following the principles that is that are being that are being important from your examination standpoint. So, just checking the mock is 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 out of the question. So, uh, it comes along with the session. Anybody else, guys? Anything that you would want me to take on? I still have two more minutes, and I really want to spend any any even 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 one second that I have for this one hour with you because you have to get the best out of it. All right, guys, if there is nothing, then we will wrap up. I think it was, uh, I hope it was, it was um, insightful in terms of you knowing as to how the overall exam would look like and how you should be preparing for your exam. Again, if there is any question, feel free to reach out to FedTram for that. You have their uh, contact details as well as the, um, the number, as well as the website. Fintram.com is, is something that you really need to refer. If you want to reach out to me, you have my WhatsApp number as well as my email. We are happy to support you in the best way possible. And I always say this, uh, like a broken record, together we can ace the ASVIL exam and we will surely ace it. Thank you very much, guys. See you next time. Till then, this is Pankaj Dhingra signing off. Mm -hmm.